Good morning, traders. Today's Saturday, July 1st. What is it that I don't care about? There was once upon a time in the beginning of 2023, January, February time frame, where I did care to set out and try to educate the YouTube YouTube universe of misinformed traders, day traders, namely, or investors. But then I realized at some point, you know what? I really don't care. I don't care if people are willfully ignorant. I don't care if they continue to just feel bearish and try to just go off your emotions and I don't care if you want to keep getting nasty with me there was one hooligan who you'll see a little bit later try to give me a lecture on how the market forces work second intelligent world on Twitter buffoon so the reason why I'm showing you this slide is in the upper right, Ron Walker, one day ago, is still calling for a crash. And then the maverick of Wall Street, since he's got nothing else to talk about, oh, let's talk about Bank of America's $1 billion, $100 billion problem. All these fools, actually, I don't even care that they're idiots. The bigger issue is, look at the number of views that are getting. Those, that is more concerning as an aggregate of the misinformation they are putting out there in the trading community. But yet on the upper, on the left side, is a video I put out on January 13th. Said the bear market is over. But, like I said, there was once upon a time that I did care. <laughs> but now I don't. And now I'm only, that's why I only put out videos like once a week. But I'm active on Twitter though. I still share my thoughts on Twitter. Because those who follow me on Twitter and don't try to banter and impose your idiotic views on me, those are the people who actually want to get better at trading and not just try to go up on there and give me some stupid lecture. These are the market forces. Market maker. <laughs> so stupid. Let's get into it. Guys, I showed this monthly chart. That was the source of my secret bull market. Remember that? Look at the MACD now. That sucker is inches from positive crossing. Okay? Inches from positive crossing. That's the monthly MACD. Ho, 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 ho. All right? I tweeted this. Now I see why David Frost said there's a huge move coming in July. You're going to see another tweet on that in a little bit. I will get into too much more of that right now. But look, guys. It's above the SMA 20. It, pff, here's EMA 50. You guys know I talk about that all the time. It's above the SMA 20, not even touching the SMA 20, going up. I want to call your attention to this. Consolidate, consolidate, consolidate. Consolidate, consolidate, up, 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 up. Break out. You're going to see this pattern. Yesterday. Okay. Here. That was this week, guys. Consolidate, consolidate. Up, 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 up. Breakout. This breakout move was yesterday. We are at day one of the breakout. Guys, it's not just going to stop here and then go down. This is a breakout move. When you talk about breakout moves, this goes for a few days. Look at this. Up, 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 up. 
Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> okay. Now, let me zoom out. Remember this? This was the this is the uh, May to June. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Chop, chop, chop. Up, 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 up. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. There you go. Here we go. Right here. Here's the band. Here's the monthly band. Remember that? I talked about this. Chop, 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 chop. Up, down, higher, low. Up, down, higher, low. Up, up. Boom. Okay. That's what we're looking at, guys. When I say it's a breakout move, this is a breakout move. This is if if it's a, a non-breakout move is kind of got to go up one day, up a couple days, and then go down. And let's see. Here, here we go. One day, two days, plateau down, right? That That's an example. But look what happens here when you talk, when you talk about consolidate, consolidate, consolidate. Boom. Okay? It's multiple days. <clears throat> it's multiple days. It's not just one day up, two day up, flat down. No, this is a breakout move. It's a breakout move. Okay? So, look at the MACD, guys. This is the, <laughs> as of yesterday, the four-hour MACD, it's only right here. Look how high it can go. Especially when you're talking about the four-hour MACD here. here uh, May, I'm just going to estimate May 28th, 29th, just estimating. A month ago, guys, we're on July 1st now. Okay, this yesterday was the thirtieth. Well, this well uh, technically, look, think about this. This is a month, or just roughly a month between here and here. That's a month. We are just now starting to leave it again. Okay, put that in perspective. Let that sink in for a second. Yeah, it's about to go on a run again. Okay, so there you have it. That's what I want to show you about that slide. All right. Updated bull bars. Uh, last, uh, two, uh, no, it's actually two weeks ago. I talked about 44486. Yesterday, we took out <laughs> the June 15th, 44390 high. Yesterday, we took it out. Bye-bye. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, here are your bull bars. Zoom in, just so you can see it more clearly. There, there are your numbers. Check it out. Once past four 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 seven eleven, right here. Once you get past this, I think you're going to see a surge, guys. Nothing but pay dirt. Okay, so the bull bars allows you to see the target where MM will likely consolidate before making the next move higher. Okay? That that's that's how you should think about these bull bars, right? Here we go. That's the David Frost prediction uh that I talked about touched on a few moments ago. He is predicting in July a 100 to 150 point move <laughs> in the S&P 500. Now he didn't. He doesn't say it's up or down. He doesn't say that because I watched the video. He doesn't say, "Well, I think it's going up. I think it's going to be 100 and 150 move up." Okay, so now, given what you just saw on the monthly, that MACD, if that if that MACD positive crosses, watch out. That's like a moving freight train. That once that train gets started, you can't just make a hard right turn or stop. You can't just slam on the brakes on that train, the monthly MACD. So there is evidence that supports what David Frost is saying. That I just showed you. That same monthly chart that I've kept secret for months since February when I first found it. February 4th. Okay? Don't mess around with the monthly MACD. Watch out. It is within inches of doing a positive cross. You think it's going to positive cross and then boom, crash negative cross? Per Ron Walker? Oh, hell no, it's not. Hell no. That monthly MACD has been months since the October 13th low. Been months in the making. You think that thing's just going to turn and burn and go down? No way. No way. 
Okay, here's the, yeah, this is the same monthly right there, just so you could see it next to uh, David Frost's tweet. Oh, the, or, the, or the tweet that I said about David Frost. Okay, hey, look at that, guys. Damn, it's not even touching the SMA20. That's hella bullish. There it is. Consolidate, up, 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 breakout. Okay, boom, there you have it. Do you realize that in the last 24 hours, well, I sent this tweet last night, so now it's 48 hours, but 24 hours, technically that's still correct, SPY has reclaimed the last two weekly highs. June 12th, 44390, which, which it reclaimed yesterday, and then the day before that was June 19th, 438.37. In 24 hours alone, it has reclaimed two previous weekly highs. I consider that a breakout. That's a breakout move, guys. That's a breakout move. And it's now consolidating under those various bull bars that I showed you earlier. Consolidate. It's good. Boop, boop. It's going to keep going. <laughs> okay? So, there you have it. I bring, I, in this tweet, I also said, like, on the August 16th, when that was reclaimed, we kept going. Remember, August 16th was 431.17, right? Uh, yeah, 431, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, right here, 431.17. Up, look, up, 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 boom, 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 okay? We went from 431.17 to 443.90, another 12 points. Okay? So, 443.90 was just taken yesterday. Is this the time to be shorting? Oh, no. Let's see if that tweet is next. Not quite. Okay, no, no not quite. It, uh, you'll see that tweet. I know I have it in here. Okay. I tweeted, this would have been Thursday, if you reclaim 438.37, which was the weekly high, reclaim 438.37, and the all-time high on 615, 443.89, will be challenged. That's precisely what happened. 438.37 was the weekly high last week. Effectually, that makes it a bull bar. Ah, now you're starting to put the pieces together. Okay, so. Here we go. Here's the history lesson, guys. Look at all of these times. Previous highs were taken. And how high it kept, how much higher it kept going. 8 points, 14 points, 13 points, 10 points. The 615, 443, 90 high was taken again yesterday. Based on what you see here in history, should you short it? No. No. This is not the time to short. History is 100% accurate. Okay, here's another good lesson for you guys. One, two, three times this week. Well, this is just at, at, the, at the time I sent this tweet. Three times. The 65-minute negative cross, positive cross, negative cross, positive cross, negative cross, positive cross. <laughs> Don't look at negative cross in isolation as bearish. That is the moral of the story. You would have gotten in big trouble. The same applies to the Daily MACD. Don't just say, oh, Daily MACD, negative cross, because I invite you to go look back into May. What happened? Positive crossed again. And I think if you look at the Daily MACD for yesterday, it's curling back up, and I think it's going to positive cross again because we're in a breakout mode. 
twice now. The Daily is going to about to do it. Okay? So, yes, I have heard from the experts of the Daily MACD. I have heard from you in February and March. Oh, negative cross. That's it. We're going down. No, I don't think so. All right. So, okay. This is earlier. See, I, 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 I like to quiz my followers on Twitter. I don't always like to give them the answer. I will explain the significance of 438.37 when, when MM actually takes it. If you are unaware of 438.37, if you're unaware that it is significant, it is therefore impossible to see that this is a bullish pattern. This would have been uh, Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. See that? Boom, 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 boom. This is 438.37, this dark green line right there. Okay. But, oops. Let's go back to uh, previous. Oh, sorry. No, I didn't mean to do that. Here we go. Now that it actually took 438.37, this okay yeah it took it it took it in extended hours 438.37 it took it in extended hours thursday evening thursday evening that was the high for last week all right so there you have it okay the 195 Right here. Here on the left here is a 65 minute. That's that negative cross, positive cross, negative cross, positive cross. Here's the 195. At no time did it go below the zero line. It just I'm watching it all day, every day now. I just watch it. I watch what it's doing. Watch what you're doing. Stayed up there and curled up. Up you have positive you have a positive cross. On the zero line too, and now it's curling up. MACD from opening bell negative zero point zero two, negative. It, it it was right there. I was like, that's what I was looking for. I was like, ooh, is the zero line gonna stuff the one ninety five? That hasn't happened in history, by the way. That has not happened. But it did. See, it went from negative zero point zero two, point zero six. 0.2, It kept getting stronger. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. I don't care what's going on with this. Negative cross, positive cross, negative cross, positive cross. The 195 is getting stronger. I said, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay? So, that's the moral of that story. Now, this was, let's see, the 29th. I think that would have been Thursday. I think it was Thursday, was it not? Hold on a second, let me check that. I think it was. Yep, Thursday. Okay. I tweeted to uh to James Franklin. This is before the pre market, before this red candle. It was up here. It was up here. I, when I tw sent that tweet, it was up here. I said, uh oh. Spies up big in pre-market. I'm going to sell my calls from yesterday at opening bell, then get been get back in after the dip. After the dip. I called this down move before it happened. I was like, well, it's going down. It's going down. The way, right here, which I suspect will happen. Then I later tweeted, Notice I talked about a dip before the economic data came out. GDP. It was GDP in the morning. The market maker... The, here's the moral of the story, guys. The market maker never, ever, never, ever, 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 never reacts to the economic data or to what Jay Powell or to what anything is happening. Never, ever, ever. They already know the answer. They were simply setting up the megaphone. Bring it up all night. All night. So you can rip it down. Set up the megaphone. 
trap some more bears, and then rip it up. That's it. That's it. There is never, ever a reaction. It's the same like, we do, uh, for those of you, I don't know, I'm just giving you a hypothetical scenario. I don't know, you know, I'm not accusing anybody of this. If you committed a crime, and a detective shows up at your door and has some questions for you, or calls you into the police station to ask you some questions, I promise you, that detective already knows the answer to the questions he or she is going to ask you. They want to know if you know the answer, or if you are being truthful. This is the same thing with the market maker. They already know the number that's going to come out. They're simply setting up to make the move that they are premeditating ahead of time. Okay? That's it. That's it. So, once again, don't try to anticipate what you think the number, the economic data number, whatever it is, GDP, CPI, who cares, whatever it is, non-farm payrolls, don't try to anticipate or interpret that. It does you no good. When I'm showing you right here, I said, dude, it's going to dip. It's going to go, I said, it's going to dip. I don't care what the number was. It's going to dip no matter what. <laughs> okay? There you have it. So, okay, yeah, this is earlier. I actually showed you the slide earlier. When I had the circles here, circle here, circle here, and this is a 430. Uh, I'm just quizzing the, the, the followers on Twitter. Anyone care to point out how this is bullish? <laughs> right here. How is this set up bullish? How is it bullish? I think I uh let me I show you the answer in another slide. Uh, yeah, let me uh keep let me keep going on this. Okay. Okay, well this is, I already showed you this actually. Here's 65 minute negative cross positive cross, negative cross positive cross, negative cross positive cross. Okay? So, could be a first for 2023. I don't remember seeing this uh before. So, there you have it. But once again, do not look at negative cross in isolation. Do not do that. There are overriding factors, also known as the 195. Okay, here we go. Here's the answer to that question. Why is this setup bullish? Why is this setup bullish? 438.37. Is the weekly high last week? Okay. It's consolidation under a major line. And what have I always said? Uh-oh. Consolidation under a major line is always hidden bullishness. Always, 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 always. I kind of laugh because a lot of people, a lot of traders have that misconception. Oh, no, look, that's a rising wedge. It's going to fall out of the wedge. Oh, hell no. No, that is so wrong. No. If it's under a major line, oh, that's consolidation. Every single time for the past Six months or all of 2023, I have said this every single time. You were under, remember the monthly chart? The hidden bullishness? It was consolidating under SMA 20 for months. And now in June, it said, see ya, wouldn't want to be ya. Left SMA 20 in the dust. Consolidate, consolidate, consolidate. Breakout today. Fri I'm sorry, yesterday, Friday, Friday, not today. Today's Saturday. I want you to look real damn close right here. Here it is. This is the extended hours. One little candle right there. 438.37. It closed right at 438. Dot three seven. <laughs> you 
You cannot get more precise than that. And finally, I want to end this video showcasing how idiotic people can be. I want you to, I want to introduce you to Bozo the Clown, Second Intelligent World. I think, I think your uh, Twitter handle is a typo. It shouldn't be Intelligent World. It should be Second Ignorant World. Homie the Clown over here tries to give me a, a lecture on what he thinks drives market forces. They are truly random. The market's going to go up or down as it pleases. And the market maker is not a single entity. You fool. You are a fool. Okay? You're an idiot. Third grade explanation. Try to talk to me about you can't explain what the market forces are. They just are the way they are. I bet you believe the world is flat too, don't you? Damn. Buffoon. Okay, feel free to follow me on Twitter. But I don't encourage you to go up there and try to give me lectures based on QAnon conspiracies or based on non-scientific, non-data facts. But if you got something to say that's actually grounded in data that you can point out to me, that's perfect. Don't forget to listen to your favorite music while you're trading. Helps you get into the right state of mind. Helps you get into the right flow state. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, or click to be notified when I release something new. With that, I'm Agent 00. Whoa. Signing off.